Okay, so we're finally coming up for the final hurdle of, to be fair, what has been quite a mammoth journey in creating a PCB. Um, so le where we left off in our last video was uh, getting to the point where we we're starting to lay out where the components are going to go, uh, how this board's all going to be soldered together. So that's what we're going to do now, start soldering all the parts together on the board. Um, now to do this, uh, as I said in the last video, I'm going to use something called Green Coat. Uh, that I can spray on it basically ends up setting into like hard lacquer that will just protect this uh, board and give it a nice green finish or at least that's a theory what does happen though is once you apply it um, you can then solder through it and while that's going on it actually uh, is makes it easy, a lot easier to solder apparently um, but you get a small window of opportunity so once that's done I've probably got well really I need to be doing it all this evening so once I start soldering this evening I've basically got to carry on so it's six o'clock in the evening now, so we'll, uh, we'll make a start and uh, basically what we're going to have to do is get everything, all the parts soldered in, um, give it a test, fix any broken links and do all that before we uh, finish in one evening. So I'm, I'm reckon it's probably going to take me a couple of hours to do it, but uh, let's see anyway, let's, let's make a start. Right, okay, so here's the uh, product I'll be using, it's uh, by Bungard. And so I've, I've read a few bits about this and it seems to be okay. Strangely enough, I've not really seen much on YouTube about it. Um, it could just be that, you know, I know it's green coating and uh, I've been doing the wrong search, but who knows. Uh, I've been giving this a good old shake for two minutes and it says basically now I just need to spray it from a distance of 25 to 30 centimetres. Now it says just put on a thin coat. I've no idea what that's going to look like, so we'll just try it and uh, see how we go. Right, okay, so, so it's the first time I've used this, so I've no idea what to expect, and I've put a bit of paper around to hopefully protect the uh, worktop. Um, so if everything suddenly goes green, you'll know why. Um, right, let's give it a go. That probably was a little bit too much actually, um, but that goes okay. Smells interesting. Uh, now one thing it says as well is just to then invert the bottle and just spray it out. So I think I'll just do that somewhere else for a second just to make sure then you don't get the uh, the cap locked. And it says leave it for about five minutes um, just to uh, just let it dry off a little bit. But that's actually looking all right actually. I'm surprised if it actually sold through quite good. That would be uh, that would be quite nice actually. Um, yeah, okay, well, let me just give you this uh, kind of quick clean. I mean, literally, I've just used two or three sprays of that, and this is a 300ml can, so, yeah, this, this should last for ages. Right, let's go and, um, yeah, let's go and give this a clean. Okay, so that's had a, uh, about five minutes to just dry off a little bit, and that, um, just gently feel that. It doesn't feel tacky at all. Um, I think that's starting to just dry off just nicely, so uh, I, think we're, I think we're looking about right. And uh, yeah, actually that already that looks quite nice actually. It's it's definitely green, so and it is coated. So I guess the green coat has done its job. So the next test is going to be what it's like to solder through, because um, apparently this this I think it acts as a little bit like a flux as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to try that. So I think what we'll do first of all is we'll put the connectors down the left and right hand side because they're the um, I think profile wise they should be the lowest items. Um, just double check that actually because these will be the power blocks I'll be using up here and if we look at these actually these should come in around the same height anyway so it'll just it'll just give the board something to rest on on the sides so as before I've got my three trays of components which I shall bring in over here um, so we are going to need uh, two of the 20s Make sure the pins on those all look good. Uh, that's not a 20, that's a 16, it's in the wrong tray. Um, cool, so two of those, which should be the control Y bus. Uh, we want two of the 16s for the address bus. So they are there. And then another two of those for the data bus. Good, both 16s. <clears throat> and then finally uh, two of the 10-way ones which will be for the power connectors along the top. So that's all the bits I'm going to solder for the moment. Uh, let's get the soldering iron on. I'll leave this bit of paper down here just for the moment just until I'm sure this is 
no longer tacky actually. Nah, that's that's pretty much dry. I'll leave it on this just for the moment, just so I don't get anything stuck to everything else. Uh, and the iron is pretty much up to temperature, so that's good. Right then, let's get soldering. I'll probably do some of these as a, um, a speed up a little bit, because once I get soldering, I'm sure you know what it looks like. Uh, right, let me stop yammering away and get stuck on. Right, there you go. Let's go. Okay, so that's the edge connectors in place. I am sticking a little bit to the edges of the board, but I think it's just where it's around the edges. So what I'm doing is leaving a few fingerprints around. So I'll probably want to just let this dry off a little bit more. But that's fine. Again, I'm terribly impatient with these sort of things. I really should should watch it. Uh, so right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, solder down in each corner, and then I can just make sure these are perfectly flat and perfectly well placed, and then we'll uh, we'll go on to the other connectors. So I'll be interested to see now how well this is to solder. Give this iron a tin. Right, off we go. Come on. Yeah, that first one's not took brilliantly, but I think that's probably more to the state of my iron, uh, which isn't in great condition. Uh, let's just try the one over here again. It is definitely soldering there, I think. Looks like I'm having trouble actually transferring some of the heat through to the joint. joints do look a little bit dry actually. We just carry on, sometimes it takes me a while because I've not ironed with this, uh, not doing it with this soldering iron for some time so it's it's not impossible, it's just my iron that's dirty. Um, yeah it's interesting that, it is, um, I don't want to say, it's not sort of going through the <coughs> through the coat, it seems like, <coughs> it seems to be a lot of it is, I'm getting the component leg hot but it's taking a while for it to get through to the board itself. Again we'll, we'll play with that a little bit I think. Um, I'm just going to see if I can just straighten these connectors up now just by reflowing some of these connections. Actually they look okay. Right okay let's, let's see if I can go for these next ones. Okay, well that's all the corners down. Um, I just can't quite tell if they're good connections or not. It's difficult to tell actually. I can't see if it is going through the coating or not. I guess what I'd have to do is just get the multimeter out and just give it a test. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder down the rest of these connections uh, on these edges and then I'll give it a multimeter test. So I'll uh, I think we'll go to a time lapse now because I don't know how you sat here watching me. Okay, right, so that's the uh, first round of connectors in, all the ones down the edge. Um, yeah, I don't know. Are these. Some of these ones were easier to solder, so these ones down here are definitely easier to solder, um, or rather no more difficult than I would have expected on the pad boards. These ones at the top were a little trickier, and that might just be because it was sort of wicking the uh, the heat of the iron away, uh, which is really what these sort of thermal lines are for, so that the idea is that it won't wick it away too quickly, because if you just sort of soldered into that, that whole expanse of copper and tin would just sort of wick the heat away and the iron would sort of lose temperature. 
um, but I don't know if it was that. I mean, it looks a mess, but it always does when I solder. And I think, again, really, I'm just the tip. I definitely need to replace that because I'm actually having to, I'm trying to burn my finger here, I'm actually having to solder a little bit further up of it because uh, the tip just doesn't seem to like to transfer solder. Uh, and I think, you know, I mean, these aren't expensive, so I really should just replace the tip and then that'll probably make it a lot easier. I also need to think as well if I'm actually uh, doing it at the right temperature. So I'm currently running at 300 degrees centigrade. Uh, which has been working for me so far, so it may be actually that's not quite the right temperature either. But I mean, they, they seem to be going okay. So, uh, right, well, they, they look to be going okay. I guess the real question now is is whether they actually are connecting or whether they're uh, not connecting. So um, I've got the uh, usual multimeter here. So B means that it's um, it's a good connection. Um, and what I would expect to see again is that uh, now I know some of these tracks are broken, so some of these won't work. But if I connect from there to there, I should get a beep, and that's good. That means actually it is going along the track and coming out the other side. So if I try some of these, what I think I'll probably do is do it from the edges. So uh, that's going to be hard because I can't quite see around both sides, but if I connect that pin to that pin and then basically walk up the pins, I should get a connection on both sides. Probably not the easiest thing to do actually. I should probably uh, I should probably make myself a little tester actually to test these lines. Well, that's good. The bottom ones, uh, the top ones here connect both sides. And if I go sometimes it's difficult to get a connection on <coughs> these ones. On the solder joints themselves, but I should always get a decent connection on the on the lines. Uh, right, let's see. There's an easy way of testing these. I oh, know I can go on the bars here. So if I good, so they're all okay. So the outsides are okay, which I'll just test it anyway. Uh, um, I don't think I've got any other way of testing these. No, I'll just persevere for the second. Uh, so now I want to test the upper ones. So I guess if I stand it up like this, this is so tricky. Good, okay, well I know they're at least making connection there. What I'll do now is just quickly just do a cross check across them. Just make sure if I connect sort of pins together there's none that are short circuiting. And so far actually. These look okay. Cool, so the address bus end to end is connecting as it should, uh, which is fantastic. Now I know the control Y bus had a break there, so I'm not expecting that to work. Uh, and that that one just there, you probably can't see it quite on the camera, but that one down there has definitely got a break in it, uh, which we knew about, and there was <laughs> definitely plenty up here where I'd uh, completely broken it. Um, but what I'll do is I'll quickly beep through the rest of them and um, just see if they're connecting and if they are then I can move on to the, the next part of the card uh, which again I'll just do in a time lapse just be the quickest thing to do. Okay, just take a quick pause again. So uh, as you can see now, we've got the uh, all the connectors on down the side. Got the power connectors on the top. So now we've just got the actual bus connectors to go in the uh, each of these spaces. So this is one where I said I actually already have these sort of stacking uh, headers, um, and before these were quite useful because what you could do is you could uh, put on a uh, IDC connector onto the back of those that carried the ribbon cable. Uh, but of course this time there is no ribbon cable because uh, it's all on the PCB so that's basically what should save us all the time uh, and this should be a lot more reliable in theory once it's done it should be done which I have had problems with the ribbon cables uh, so how are we doing so far then so soldering wise definitely having a few problems soldering up here uh, what it does seem is actually the, <coughs> so this one actually has splayed out a little bit the solder and what it seems to be is that once you get the green coat up to a certain temperature it sort of gives way and then lets the solder melt through or it could be the um, 
flux. It could be the flux in the solder as well that's doing that. So I'm going to keep a close eye on that. Uh, but what I've done is I've tested those connections and uh, basically the, the top four of each of these are uh, all connected together, which they should be because that's the positive rail. Uh, sorry, no, that's the yeah positive rail. Uh, the next four then are all connected to each other and that's the ground rail. And then the the diagnostics rail at the bottom isn't actually connected this time around, so uh, that's just left on its own. Uh, what I've also done then as well is by connecting onto ground with my multimeter as well is just run my probe down all of these connectors just to make sure they're not bridging over to the ground plane in anywhere and so far they look okay. So uh, what will happen now is I've I've put one of these uh, where have we gone? Yeah. <clears throat> I've put one of these little header blocks in here and then just connected each of these onto the blocks. And what that's doing is just basically holding them together and making it act like it will be a single socket. So when I solder, that should hold it all together. And then when I take those out, when I finish soldering, um, it should stay in the right place. So the theory now is um, that if I, and I think I'll start down this end, if I push those through, it's a little bit tricky to get all the leads lined up as well, which I was expecting. Because these are stackable headers, they're very uh, very pliable the pins, they do bend a lot, so it's taking me a little bit of lining up, which is good actually I suppose in many ways, because if they were a lot f more fixed, chances are they wouldn't go in the holes, because the holes aren't perfect either. Uh, but now if I push that down, I want to try and get that as square as possible. Now actually what's quite useful is the fact that these holes are slightly off as well as actually holding the components a little bit further. What I often found with the pad boards was, because the holes are all perfectly aligned, uh, sometimes components would be too easy for components to drop back out again. They wouldn't hold in place, so you then had to sort of hold them in one place while ironing with the other and sort of tacking on a little blob of solder. Very, very tricky. So I'm hoping with these, because they're quite a tight fit, that should actually give me a, uh, make it a little bit easier to manoeuvre them. Uh, right, okay, well, let me uh, let me jump back onto some time lapse. What I'll do is we'll put this whole row in, um, and what we'll do actually, yeah, I might stop again the video if there's something interesting to say, otherwise, I'll just carry on going and then we'll pick up uh, when it comes to testing time. So, so far, uh, one hour in, so we're at seven o'clock now in the evening, uh, and probably making good headway actually. I think it might end up being about nine o'clock, uh, probably going to get hungry halfway through. Uh, this green coat now is less tacking than it was before, so I probably should have left it an hour actually before soldering. Uh, it's got my thumbprints all over it, which is good, so I suppose that means it's a definitely a handcrafted piece of uh, kit. You wouldn't see that on a professional board. Well, there's a lot of things here you wouldn't see on a professional board. Anyway, right, let's let's carry on. Let's get stuck in. There's times times getting on. Okay, so I'm definitely having the same problem I had before with these uh, leads, which is because they're so long, they tend to uh, suck the solder up them. So I think what I'm going to do is now is now tack the corners in. I think I'm just going to uh, chop the leads down a bit, just so they'll be easier to solder. It'll also just make access a little bit easier as well, because um, that's going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, right, here we go, here's my side cutters. Um, yeah, and this, again, soldering's always a little bit tricky with this. So, uh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut these down a little bit, and again, I'll go back into time lapse. But cut them down. I can solder over the rest of them, give them a test, and then I think we're I think we're well on the way. Uh, this is all so messy, but oh well, I'll get better at soldering one day, I'm sure. Okay, so this is frustrating. I'm finding it really hard to uh, add your solder through this green coat. Um, and it's alright generally, but what's happening is it's getting too easy to bridge over to these other lines. But there's a few times now where I've had to sort of try and re-solder it, try and tidy it up. But of course, 
once you've gone through the uh, green coat it's then it can't tell one track from the other so whereas normal you'd have a resist each one would have a little hole for each pad you're going to go for and it would stop you going through this well of course the way the green coat works is wherever you apply heat it'll go through and it is bridging in a few places so I think I've got that working I'm just going to give it a quick test now and see if it connects line to line but I think what I'm going to find is a few of the connections are crossed and I guess what I'm coming to now is do I have patience to carry on with this because now we're at half past seven this is just taking forever and it's really frustrating I, I think a lot of it is the tip I'm using but I'm kind of committed now I can't really stop um, but I'm getting to that point now where I'm thinking well is it just worth buying a professional board um, I'm really disheartened now so let's, let's see so if I try each one of these this one was one where the tracks were all working so I expect these to connect to each other okay so that's what I was expecting now the question now are any of them bridging well it looks like I've only got one short on there which is actually quite surprising uh, so it's this fourth row up this is where it really needs some really good eyesight now I think that one's okay this is that one. Oh no I can see it is a massive bridge over there so this is where I've got to try and get in with a soldier knife now and try and encourage him to separate um, yeah there's a massive splodge actually I think I've just taken that out in one go see it's amazing see, as soon as I've got an audio <laughs> as soon as I've got a, um, an audience for this seems to be working absolutely fine when I'm doing tarb laps it's been a right pain uh, so apparently now four is not bridging anymore yeah they seem okay okay maybe I've just been lucky maybe I should just play one <laughs> okay well you can see now I'm uh, I need to do that again up there and then I've just got the ten ones to go in the middle but that's been frustrating to solve I don't know why that's proving so hard um, I think it probably is the green coat um, one thing I will say for it is it does tend to then the soldiers will tend to stay where it's put so if I didn't have this green coat on it would just start tra travelling down the tracks uh, which would be even more annoying you often see that when people have done this without putting this coating on you just end up with um, with the soldiers just going all the way down the tracks which I don't know if that's better or worse sometimes I mean <laughs> this is messy either way but all right, I suppose I'm just going to have to persevere with this, aren't I? All right, I think I'll do this next one up here. Now, I know there are some breaks in here, so I know some things won't work down this end of the board, but it should all work down this end of the board. Um, one last check I do need to do is just make sure that ground plane is not interfering with any of these other connectors. So if I, if I come in for this connector here, I shouldn't be picking it up on any of these which I'm not good so none of them are short into ground either no thing that should short to ground is ground okay all right let's get to time again put another set of them in okay then so it's <laughs> it's entirely possible that i've not been uh, using the soldier nine at a high enough temperature i was going to point where i was despairing quite a lot and thinking well, it's just really struggling really struggling so i thought i'll just try it higher temperature so i've knocked it up to 350 degrees c and that's definitely making it a lot easier so i think well, that's that's probably the temperature needed to get through this green coat uh, or probably the temperature i should be soldering out all along um, not entirely sure I really should read that up also my iron I've had a few times where I've been soldering and it's suddenly starting to get quite sticky again and I think uh, what I'm doing is glancing over to my iron it's sort of dropping down in temperature so I don't know if that's because it's got a fault on it or if it's just uh, again something that's wicking away the heat anyway it looks like the next row is now in so again I need to do is just give it a quick test 
So I know full well that this area down here is really bad and probably not likely to conduct over to here. But what I can at least do is try it from this point to this point uh, and just see what is connected and what isn't and if there's been any bridges. Uh, there's definitely a few bits where I struggle with the soldering so it's entirely likely there might be a few broken bits but let's see what we've got. It might not be as bad as what I thought. So I'm expecting the connections between here and here to be quite poor but um, we know that's the case and they'll need some wire fixing up so so there's definitely a fault between here and here three at the bottom just see if I can spot it can't see a break in that if it's just a poor solder joint. I'll try remelting some of these. Now I've got the iron set up to high temperature, they definitely are flowing much nicer, so I think I just have had the iron way too low. Uh, let's see how that looks now. No, still did on that third one. Yeah, they look fine. What's up with that then? It must, must be like a hair hairline fracture or something. Just to see how far over that goes. So, no, genuinely nothing on that one. Hmm, interesting. Right, okay, well, more of this now. So basically what I need to do now is keep testing these try and fix the issues, try and get it so it goes all the way across. Uh, I'll also pull out some Kynar wire in a minute as well just to jump over some of these connections. But again we'll go back to a time lapse. Okay, so I've got, got, it, got it to the point now where these ones all connect, so the DC bus is all working now. So I've had to put in um, uh, six wire links to go over, which I, I expected that would be the case actually, because I knew there were some down here that were broken and missing. Um, didn't realise there were some broken down here, but for some reason they just weren't making a connection. So they all look fine now. Um, so, my camera battery is getting pretty low now, and to be honest I think there's more than enough content for video. So. I'm going to do these ones uh, quietly on my own, I mean it's coming up for half past eight now. Um, so it'll just be exactly the same thing again, just need to put all the connectors in. Uh, once they're all in I can, oh, I'll try and get this out, uh, yeah once they're in then I can uh, just do a test again, make sure they're all connecting up. And then I think of what I'll do then is I'll jump forward to tomorrow um, evening where I can take a bit more of a close up of the resulting board uh, and just talk about basically what the next stages are. Um, so yeah, let's uh, just fast forward to that point.